This is Hannah Bull from the Hannah Bull TV dot com and i just watched the dark side of the ring documentary on the uwf and herb abrams to be perfectly honest with everybody i did not know much about the uwf i saw a few steve williams matches over the years from it a couple paul orndorff matches i remember reading about it in uh, cactus Jack's book. Hello, Mario. Um, I am going to do a Skype interview with Brian Blair, who was the UWF booker this week. So in the next few days, he's going to tell us all about UWF right here on the Hannibal TV. So make sure you subscribe to that. But my thoughts on the documentary, uh, from all I understood, this guy was like a cocaine addict, Herb Abrams wrestling fan bill after got him started in the wrestling business by setting up some autograph sessions in new york coincidentally he met bill after after superstar billy graham did his famous pose on the garbage can in times square herb abrams was there and bill after was with billy graham and that's when herb talked to uh, bill for the first time to get him connected in the business, then it took off from there. Do I think a league like that could have done better and lasted if there was a competent person involved with all those names and some financial backing? Yes. I know in this uh, video, this documentary, they really kind of acted like it was a bad idea for him to like do the pay-per-view in the smaller towns and run some of the smaller towns. I don't think that was a bad idea. If they had promoted it well, I'm sure Bruno San Martino, Paul Orndorff, Steve Williams, Jimmy Snuka, all these guys, Sid, could, could have drawn in those markets. But the promotion was probably just terrible as far as publicizing events because small towns, I know from my own experience, can actually get more interest in a smaller company and publicity is generally cheaper in smaller towns than in a big city like Las Vegas where they supposedly drew two or 300 people to the MGN Grand where you have competition of a million different things happening every night. But if you go to a small town, you're the big deal in the small town or even a a smaller uh, major city of about 100,000 people. They could have probably done better and put on events cheaper if they had just promoted better and watched watch their costs. I don't know how much money their TV deals were worth. As I said, I'm no expert on the UWF. All I know is it could have had more potential if you didn't have a drug addict running it. Obviously, if you have a cocaine addict who, according to a lot of reports, probably got his money from the underworld and was irresponsible. Of course, it has zero chance of succeeding. At least it got some wrestlers, some paydays, and now there's a documentary made about it. So this guy's name will be rehashed from the ashes because, as I said, I am a wrestling historian and I didn't even know much about him. I mean, there, would, there was better dark side of the rings they could have done. They could have done one on Dynamite Kid and Hall is his issues, for instance, or the, the Hulk Hogan choking out Richard Belzer, then dropping him on his head, causing him to get stitches and a concussion, which was actually worse than the Dr. D uh, incidents. There's so many dark side of the rings you could do, and I'm sure they're going to continue on for a third season. I found this to be an unusual choice for sure. I'll read some of your questions. Overall though, whatever, I didn't know much about it, but it was interesting just to know more about the company. I didn't like, the one thing I didn't like is that they again alluded that he's not really dead at the end, which is just ridiculous to even put that in there. Mario Alexander says, hey, Ralph Vaccaro, what's up? What's up? I'm about to do my exercise for the night. Chris Monty, the guy was the worst, owed a lot of money to the cartel. 
Uh, Josh, hey, nice to see you. Joe Beck, a little before our time. Well, kind of. Well, also, I don't think we got it in Canada. I don't think we got the product in Canada. But I'm telling you guys, my company is successful, and I've been in business for Great North Wrestling for 13 years. If anyone ever invested money in me, if you add up Raw's viewership and not Raw and SmackDown combined viewership, but Raw's individually and SmackDown's, the Hannibal TV has more hits over the course of a month than either of those shows with a guy that works at a gym funding it. So imagine if someone would ever like give money to me to run a company, a guy that knows how important it is to break even, but maybe, maybe I'm a little jealous of this guy. Um, I was never a Coke dealer, so I don't know what it, what it's like to have tons of money. Al Hiroshin, sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name. Herb Abrams, UWF on Sports Channel in the 90s, did a 0.6. Raw on the USA Network is doing a 0.46. So there you go. UWF actually had a better rating than Raw is getting now. That's funny. Uh, the Coke heads are the worst. Someone says, I'm working in the bouncing industry, in the bar industry. I've known a lot of people that uh, have been uh, fucked up on that over the years. I hate dealing with those people. They, especially when you're dealing with trying to eject them from a club, it, it's not fine. It's fine to have recreational use for like the Brutus beefcakes of the world. From what I understand, he was caught with cocaine in a subway once, and many people have said he does it here and there. I mean, he never abused it, but a guy that abuses it, that's pretty bad. I guess Hulk Hogan was another recreational user, according to his books as well. Alex, legal research. Am I shocked that Martha will be appearing on the episode about Owen Hart? No, not at all. Harry Smith has said that to his knowledge, WWE has never really pressed her in recent years, I mean, to, to like have Owen in the WWE Hall of Fame, for instance, uh, they did allow Martha to go into the George Tragos Luthez Hall of Fame. I covered that. Uh, that video of Owen going into the Luthez Hall of Fame is on the Hannibal TV, as well as a whole seminar of Harry, Bruce, Ross, and Diana Hart talking about Owen for an hour that Brian Blair also appears in. So search those up about Owen Hart. And I also did a compilation video of Owen Hart. But no, I'm not shocked Martha appears in it. I don't think she's as uh, recluse as she used to be. Uh, how much longer for the coronavirus? I wish I knew. As I said, I'm going freaking nuts here without my weightlifting, going absolutely crazy. Uh, why they're allowing liquor stores to never be shut so these fucking alcoholics can still get drunk and all the problems that can occur um, through alcohol. And there's no issue with that. Yet I can't work out is beyond me. I looked it up today. There's only about 60,000 people in Canada that have the coronavirus in the entire country, 60,000, but I still can't work out. Uh, Switchblade Sam, uh, Josh, Josh is saying that's a good heel name. All right, pal. Uh, Mike Hart says, call him. Call who? I don't know who you mean. Retro Extreme 79, Charlie Sheen couldn't hang with Herb Abrams. Well, Charlie Sheen's still alive. Surrey Jack, who's the biggest guy you had to throw out of a club? There was one... There was one incident that I thought was awesome. I don't know if I've ever told this story on, uh, on video, but in Canada, you cannot smoke inside clubs. And I was working at a bar that uh, had a – it seems like I always worked at bars with staircases, which are always fun to chuck people out of. But there was like a long staircase and at the halfway point, there was like uh, maybe, a, maybe a 10 by 15 foot um, plat, plat, not platform, but like break in the staircase 
where the coat check was. So one of this, we were all plain clothes bouncers. We didn't wear security outfits at this particular bar. It was before they regulated that. Now you have to wear security outfits. But this smaller bouncer was asking this guy to put out his cigarette because he was about to leave. He was getting his jacket and I guess he just thought, okay, I'm leaving anyways. I'll just light my cigarette. And this guy was like six, 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 eight, over 300 pounds. And I remember he like took a drag off of it and blew it in my friend's face. And I was at the top of the first staircase, still like looking at the bar being cleared out, watching the dance floor and everything. And at the same time, I was keeping an eye on the coat check. And I remember it had been a long night and I was guess bored and pissed off. So I like ran halfway down the staircase and then just jumped in like a flying shoulder tackle and tackled this guy. And he literally went flying, practically missed the whole second staircase and his head went straight into the wall at the bottom of the stairs. And he was completely knocked out, completely unconscious, knocked out. And I remember the manager came up and he's like, Devin, I was in a hoodie. I always wear hoodies. He said, Devin, put your hoodie on, walk out the back door, go out the alley and go get the hell out of here. So I remember the next night I came in for work. They're like, man, we managed to cool that situation down and get that guy out of here without uh, getting you in any shit, but don't do that again. So I that stands out to me as like the the biggest guy because he was huge. Um, Harsh Master too. I don't agree with liquor stores being open either. And here today they've opened or Monday they opened garden centers. Fine, that's cool. But open the gyms. Those of us that are healthy, that we already know that most people that are healthy are recovering from the coronavirus. I want to fucking work out. Okay, keep those at risk locked up. If they want to go out, put them in masks, put them in gloves, but let me fucking work out. 